Okay, here it is. The first ever race that I've been allowed to use a GoPro in the film. However, I feel like it's a bit of a letdown. The urge to not even post this on YouTube or anywhere um, is quite strong because, like, I fully expected to, like, you know, race with a bunch, like, get, like, lots of the riders on camera and, like, you know, like, make it a bit of an exciting thing. And then I just feel like a bit of an idiot because, like, quite an amateurish mistake that I suppose because I haven't raced in so long, it was very easy to make the mistake. So, you know, you don't have to go hard on me on the comments, like, because I've been, like, pretty hard on myself anyway. Um, but there's too many people wanting to see this, so I'm going to have to post it anyway. So anyway, like, it is what it is. We've got some footage and I probably, like, I want to, I want you to take something out of this. Like, I want people to see that, like, this is how you can get dropped. It's very easy to get dropped and get yourself caught out. So I thought I would still put this video out there anyway and show you how that happened. Um, we'll let the footage roll and then I'll jump in and, and talk about a couple of things along the way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be back next week, hopefully, with another one. Okay, here we go. Let's kick things off first with a quote that I hear today on Twitter of all places. It is not failure that makes success happen, it is reflecting on failure that makes success happen. Welcome back to another video everybody, and I'm going to talk you through this one. So, Pembrey Circuit Race. There's only one more left next week. If you're in the area, it's the last one to get involved. If you want to enter it and show some support, that would be epic. Now, let's get some shout outs out of the way because, first of all, big shout out to British Cycling for clearing uh, permission for me to use uh, a GoPro in this event. Uh, thank you to the organization, uh, Holt Racing. You know, I know I've been, I've known them for a long time, great bunch of people and doing lots for the local cycling scene. Um, and of course a shout out to all the riders that showed up. Um, you know, I mean, some some hitters, some hitters here uh, on the night. I'm not gonna name you all because, you know, you'll just, your egos will just be too big if I, if I, if I name you all. Um, <laughs> uh, there's this, there's lots of good riders here. There's lots of young riders as well. Talent. It's great to see so many of them coming through. Um, now, let's begin by setting the stage. So this is the second crit I've done this year. In fact, this is the second crit I've done in like a good many years, actually. Um, now, this is a purpose-built circuit. It's wonderful. Great tarmac, as you can see. And there's there's different ways you can actually race on this course. You can race uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now, when it's wet, we actually race in this direction, which means we come down this back straight, which is what we're just about getting onto now. Uh, and you can see on the graph on the left, which is like the world's smallest graph. Like, why is it so small? I tried to get a bigger one, but anyway, it is what it is. Also, I don't know why we've got gradient in the bottom corner. I should have taken that out. I'm sorry. Um, it is literally like flat the whole way apart from a, a bit of a kicker. Um, so yeah, it was dead quick down this back straight. So we had a little bit of wind and uh, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the course. Uh, and it made for a pretty sort of nervous race. I think there was uh, 14, uh, there might have been 20 of us, 19, 20 of us racing tonight. It's a pretty, like, it's a pretty big night tonight. Or this race last night actually um, you know we, we were it, it was our first time with the GoPro first time in a race with the GoPro permission to film and uh, it was quite good at the start because like you know was, uh, there was lots of like chatting about like oh we're all gonna be on TV we're all gonna be on YouTube like we're all gonna be famous and like um, 
if only um <laughs> if only uh yeah so like th there was a lot of sort of like hype around it in a way which was really nice like especially when the average age of this race is sort of you know about 21 probably is the average age for this race so you know it's nice to have you know what i call you you're not all youngsters but like a lot of you are youngsters and it's nice to have that you know that chit chat at the start where you're all like really keen um to get some footage of yourself racing um i want to keep this video upbeat as well i want to i want to talk about like you know, how cool it is to race against people who you know you can ride with locally um but you can also race with and, and it's about having a good time it's 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 a very much it's very much a club racing feel that you have down here and uh it's also quite hard racing you know because let's talk about tonight specifically we had of say you know the 20 riders that were here there was like five riders from Kathy griff um which is a team that's you know from aberystwyth uh, a good few hours north of where this race is um you also have the wheels racing academy I always call them Wheel Cycling Academy, but you know, technically, I guess it's the same name. But um, you know, a lot of the guys there are on the track, they just come back from Commonwealth Games. Will Roberts is actually in this race, so shout out Will. Special shout out to Will. Um, none of you else get a shout out. Um, <laughs> Will got a third. Uh, he got a bronze medal on the track in the Commonwealth Games. Um, and actually started in the same club that I started in, Binya Cycling Club. Um, so we got a bit of a, a little bit of history. Um, so yeah, it's it's sort of it's difficult when you have you know teams, I guess, racing at club level races. When I was when I was a junior, you know, ten years ago, it wasn't so much that it was more like a free for all. Um, and if there were teams there, you know, we kind of through punches left right and center we didn't really matter if we were teammates we didn't it didn't matter if we chased teammates down to a certain extent it was just a case of like you know it's a race that we can learn stuff from it's not like we're not treating it like a world championships where you're like i'm not gonna chase because i've got a you know, i've got a teammate up the road um so it's difficult when you're a solo rider and there's quite a few solo riders in this race you know that are racing for you know themselves we've got hev the local rider who's on our right there number 23 i think uh, the camera's a bit blurred i spent most of my time in this race worrying if the lens was getting like lots of spray on it and you know turns out the gopro's got a great like built-in windscreen wiper because um it actually wasn't that bad um so it's difficult as a as a solo rider to race these races i feel and you've got to kind of uh look after yourself but I think we also have to gang up on the other teams because to a certain extent we can't really do much unless we sort of work as a unit because the way that these races get raced and I'm sure lots of you can um, you know, relate to this who race criteriums is that if like a rider gets away from say the Welsh team then all the other riders just either follow or they just they just use the not excuse but they use the play that they have a rider up the road uh you know that works at the world championships but it tends to like frustrate the solo riders when it comes to racing in like local club events um because it just makes the race a race to be in the breakaway rather than a race to actually you know animate the race so to speak so being that the night was dictated by this howling tailwind down this back straight and then a, a massive headwind um going up the other way it was quite difficult to kind of form any sort of structured break that would commit and this is going to be the word of the video is commitment and a couple of times and we'll see throughout the video there was like this sort of issue with commitment um and how you need to commit like whether you're in a breakaway whether you're off the back whether you're going on the attack um you know there's lots of 
um, situations where commitment is key. Now, we'll get into it a little bit further on in this video. You've already probably guessed that this isn't the full race because I didn't actually finish the race. Um, you'll soon see, you'll soon find out why. There's two guys in the breakaway at the minute, they just pipped off, they're up the road. I don't think, I've just been watching through this footage now, and I don't think I saw them go. Um, or at least, like, I must have missed it um, on the GoPro footage, but I don't think, I think I remember seeing them go, like, when I was in the race, but I don't remember seeing them go in the footage. So let me know if you saw them go, leave a timestamp down, down below to the exact moment where they, where they pipped away. But you can see how easy it is, to a certain extent, to pull back a group on this course, especially if the bunch is a fair size, like 15, 10 riders, 10, 15 riders, the gaps can close really quickly. And a lot of that has to do with the wind, of course, and, you know, the, um, the technical terrain, I suppose. You know, that climb is something that you don't tend to get in a lot of crit circuits, um, you know, because uh, they're generally flat or they're generally sort of done with, you know, the corners. You know, corners are a theme in crit racing rather than climbs. I suppose, you know, climbs are more associated with a kermess, shall we say, you know, a Belgian style race on, on a lapped circuit that has, you know, a bit of everything. Um, so I suppose you could call this like a really good kermess circuit rather than a crit circuit. Anyway, I'm going off topic slightly. So anyway, we're probably about 10, 12, 13 minutes into this race now. And all is well, like my heart rate's good, I've not had to make any big efforts, I followed a couple of moves and like, you know, just surfing about. Basically I was trying to get like some footage of everybody in some way, shape or form. It was one of the reasons why I come bombing up the side of the group here and just happened to see these two riders pip off the front. And this is where it's sort of somewhat dangerous, so these two riders have gone now, if they get across to the front two, then you can start to see how it becomes a numbers game. And I'm not too sure who is in the front group. And again, you guys can help me out in the comments. Because it's quite hard to make out jerseys at this point on the GoPro. But, you know, this is the moment where it all goes to pot. And I... Okay, so... You can see my power there is not spiked. So I didn't... If you rewind ever so slightly, you'll see I didn't go up to 500, 600 watts to get over that little hill. That was my first mistake. And I'm th this is where you can learn from my mistakes. So that was my first mistake. Um, the second mistake was being on the front just before that climb. However, I couldn't have anticipated that they were going to launch over the top. So I suppose, you know, it's not really a mistake. It's more just a, you know... Uh, the, the, that mistake would have been rectified if I'd surged. I didn't surge because I assumed that the few riders that I'm with right now were going to surge as well. So basically everyone was going to surge and I would slot onto the back and given that then we'd come down the descent and into a howling tailwind again there's me desperately trying to clean the camera um, <laughs> then I'd get a free ride and you know we'd be happy as Larry as we get to the bottom bottom corner again. So that was my major mistake. My major mistake, which is a fairly amateur mistake, is being too confident that the group was going to all stay together um, and follow that surge. It's a really weird moment in the race. You know, those of you that race quite often, especially a crit race that's you know generally an hour in length, the first 10, 15 minutes are really it's a really weird part of the race like you can almost uh, guarantee that, that the race is going to settle down at some point and things are going to um, you know have a bit of a natural feel to it but the first 10-15 minutes you really don't, don't know what's going to happen you can kind of write the last 10-15 minutes but the first 10-15 minutes really difficult so you can see now like 
it's like panic stations, right? It's full on panic stations. My heart rate now is the highest it's going to be all race because I realized that Pup has hit the fan, right? Poop, Poop has hit the fan and I need to get back to this front group or we need to specifically. So I'm quite a generous guy and I wonder if that's a flaw, but I would like us all to get back on just because I feel like that benefits us all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there is like five of us here in this group, so we can, you know, we've definitely got the legs. That guy there in the blue, um, apologies, your name escapes me. One second, I've actually got the results here. Sam Tillett from Embark Bike Strong. Nice one, Sam. Sam took the win. He's in this group off the back, as far as I'm aware, okay? And he manages to get back on, as the two others. Right, and I'll try. And I've got footage of it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go through it here. So what happens here on this section is there's a little bit of finessing going on, and it becomes really difficult to form cohesion. All right, so we're not really working very well, and there's no commitment. That word, commitment. Well, there is, but not from all of us. Specifically, and I and I worry about what I'm about to say because I'm not having a go at anybody, but then again, this is a race analysis. The riders that were sitting on, or not sitting on, but definitely not contributing, are definitely strong enough to contribute and to win the race. Um, that's what was frustrating. Now, coming down into this headwind, I just sit on the front and sit at 500 600 watts like there's no tomorrow but i know i'm burning matches but you've got to commit you've got to commit and i know i'm giving a free ride to the ones behind me but if if someone does not take the bull by the horns and just drills it for 30 seconds which is what i did then we're not going to close that gap the race is going away from us so what what you have to remember is we have been dropped. We are not the bunch. The bunch is ahead of us. We are now out the back of the race. So if we don't commit to get back on, on all of us commit, etc., etc., then we're not going to get back on. Unless... <laughs> you'll see what happens in a second. But it's quite funny. Um, it's quite funny what happens. Like, I basically get left behind. But what, going back to what I said earlier about like being the nice guy... In this instance, you know, backfired. So here, for example, like the pace eases off. I know my heart rate's through the roof, but it's, I'm still recovering from that big effort into the headwind that I put in. But here, you know, the pace is easing off and there's there's not that, you know, we're not going through, we're not exchanging pulls. So, you know, we're, we're losing ground again. We, we get really close and then we lose ground. So I come through again and I do another pull just to get us up to speed into this tailwind because obviously once you get up to speed then you can almost just let the wind take you to a certain extent plus you know if you've done the work to get the group to that speed if you flick your elbow you know hopefully people come through they're more likely to come through and maintain that speed if you've done the work to get them there so anyway I hope you're all learning something from this <laughs> because I certainly did um, so obviously these crit races are a bit of fun for me uh, because I'm doing the hill climbs and everything else so it's more a case of just me being able to dip my toe into something else but it also because I've had permission to use a GoPro it's another bit of content that I can get and it's something that obviously goes down quite well on YouTube and it's something that you enjoy so if you are enjoying let me know in the comments give this video a thumbs up share it with other people that race that you know and you know, let's all learn from from my funny mistake. Um, <laughs> so we're getting into the final few minutes now of me actually being in this bike race because when I get to the point where I know it's not going to happen, um, I basically just say, well, that's it. Because at the end of the day, we're not going to get the footage and we're not going to get the result. Now, if I was training for crits, if I was serious about crits, I would keep riding. It would be really good for my fitness, etc, etc. Um, but with the weather and everything else, I decided to have an early shower, as they say. So we're coming into this climb again. 
goodness knows how many laps we've done. Um, and right here, I think, is where three guys clip away. Now, for goodness sake, right, I'm being kind here, but, like, I'm at the back there because, you know, I've come off, and th that's all we've got to do is hold the wheel in this section, and the three of them have gone. I don't know whether, you know, there was a f there was a actual acceleration, but because I'm now nearing max heart rate, me being at the back of that line means I've got pretty much no hope to respond into that move. Uh, and so it's going to be really difficult and likely not up to me to respond to that move. So at this point, those three have now gone. So it's three just ahead of us, and we are now three slash four. I think there's four of us. Um, and we never see them again. So they've, they've ridden away from us, and some of them were very clever, and they actually did very little when we were riding to try and get back on to the front group, which has just gone round that bend there, I think we've seen them. Um, the GoPro is like, really, it's really difficult in the GoPro to show sort of perspective, but they, they stormed across the gap pretty quickly. Like, I think they did it in about a lap and a half, which is about three and a half minutes of effort. And this goes to show commitment, guys. Commitment works every single time. The three of them went once they realized they were they were free of the shackles of like I guess riding with me and the others, then they could commit to it. It's it's easier to commit as a three than it is to commit as a six or a seven. Because you're always gonna have someone or two or three people that aren't going to pull their weight and they're just gonna sit there and you know use an excuse or something that you know well whatever it could be so that's something you could do you could use the, the group that you're in to try and get within touching distance and then go solo or go across in a small group and these guys managed to get across and sam till it finally does get across and i think you know if i'm not mistaken um he takes the win it's a super fast finish very quick sprint because it's into that tailwind um, and it was like 60, like 65, nearly 70 kilometers an hour tail and sprint finish. So it's not something I would have been uh, in the mix with anyway. Um, but I had hoped that I would have been in the race for longer. And a small mistake like this obviously cost me the whole race. Um, but if I was there for longer, then we could have had more footage. Obviously, we could have like you know seen how the attacks were going. We could have seen how the last ten minutes played out, and then you know we could have seen the sprint finish from from last wheel. Um, <laughs> because there's no way I would have been getting involved with the sprint finish, uh, and I don't need to answer why that is the case. So that's pretty much it, you know. And I want to come back next week, and I also want to do the race next week. Uh, you know, hopefully it'll be dry because it brings out you know, a few more people um, and you know, we can make this a regular thing hopefully, you know, I've put in um, I've asked if I can get permission for that last race to run the GoPro again um, so we'll see if that comes back and if it does then we'll have more footage um, to work with I hope you don't mind me talking over it as well by the way, like, as much as there is you know great sensation in listening to the wind whistling by and like the gear changes and the sprints and the shouting and stuff um i just i feel like i don't know maybe it's just me i need to add context to it um because you know it's i feel like when we watch real life racing on tv we we listen to a commentator but like how cool would it be if the person that was in the race was commentating as the race was happening or like you know, do you know what I mean? Like, you'd have full radio, like, you'd be able to hear what's happening in the race in a team car or something the whole time. I feel like that would be more exciting than it would be listening to commentators half the time. So, that's why I feel like giving, like, full insight and talking over a race like this, for me anyway, is, like, more exciting than, like, yeah, ambient noise or something. Anyway, um, so yeah, the race, ca the race is gone, it's over. And, uh, but, you know, I had a great time racing it because 
the amount of time and effort that goes into organizing these races. But yeah, this is the sprint finish. It's pretty epic. I tried to get it all on my camera shot. And yeah. I thought that looked good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way I like the way I could use my handlebars like a as like a gimbal or something. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate your support as always and I will see you in the next one. That was a bit scary. <laughs>